Hello guys and welcome to another puzzle. This one is from the Mensa uh, test puzzle from Finland. Let's start with the first one. So this one's quite easy. It's just uh, replacing the black parts with the uh, white parts. So this part is white, it needs to be black. This part is black, it needs to be white. So this part will of course be white and this part will be black as well as this one and this part will be white. So first one is very easy it's this one all right next one this is the same thing so uh, this one will be black 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 and these black part will be white the only one that fulfills that is this one so this one is the correct one next one this one is easy as well you just need to find which figure is missing circle triangle uh, square square circle triangle triangle square black circle of course so it's this one very very easy okay next one again which figure is missing but with a twist to it so here we have square circle triangle triangle cir square circle circle triangle well it has to be a square of course and that square will be black of course it won't be white because the triangle is white already it, it won't be dashed like this because the circle is dashed already so it has to be black it's this one another easy one next one well here we have black square striped white square white square I mean it's too easy all right so it has to be this striped square very easy right no need to explain anything next one that's the one that's missing this one is easy as well here you just have a rotation of 90 degrees so 90 degrees rotation and if this one rotates 90 degrees you'll get this one so if the and it's clockwise right clock goes this way so it's a clockwise rotation this one's wrote this one, for, uh, 90 degrees and 90 degrees here as well so it will look something like this right yeah and the only one that fulfills that is this one that one was easy too it's just a 90 degree clockwise rotation okay let's go to the next one this one's easy as well 90 degree rotation as well it's the, basically the same thing as the last one all right so 90 degrees clockwise rotation 90 degrees 90 degree you get it 90 degrees and 90 degrees so the arrow will point this way and it will be this one that is correct next one yeah this one's quite easy too so uh, what's the connection between these two and this one? Well, you just use uh, this line to cut this figure in two. Uh, you, oh, that's a really bad line. <laughs> and you end up with one of these halves. So you get this half. So you cut this circle in two and you get this one of the halves. You cut this rhomboid uh, in two and you get one of the halves and which one is one of the halves well it's not this one it's not this one because it has the wrong orientation it's not this one it's not this one and it's not the only one is this one because it has the correct orientation next one well this one's very easy too first of all you can see that when you move in this direction yeah we have always moved in this direction but you can probably move in this direction as well along the uh, rows not only the columns but I prefer to move along the columns if I don't see a pattern in the columns I will move with the rows so in this case this one moves there and we add a black square alright this one moves there we add a black square we get three this one moves there we add a black square we get three this one moves there we add a black square we get four you get it this one moves there we add the black square we get four 
this one moves there we add the black square we will get five squares two three four five all right only figure that fulfills that one is this one we have five squares concentrated in the top in the top right corner and um, very easy and the movement is again clockwise so we move like this clockwise movement in this case if we move we can either move in the columns or the rows we will just add a black square one two three two three four three four we need to have five squares here five squares that's all we need and the only figure that fulfills that one is this one next one so we can move either way actually we can move this way or this way I prefer to move in the columns as I've told you before if I don't see the pattern moving to the right in the columns I try something else I try the rows or some other uh, movement so this figure is identical with this figure and then we just add one line and we get this figure this figure identical with this figure and we add one line and we get this figure this figure identical with this figure and we add one line we get this figure so this is the correct answer yeah we can move in the rows as well but uh, the rule when moving in the rows this way is to remove one line right remove one line you get this figure remove one line you get this figure same thing here same thing here remove one line you get this figure remove one line well you'll end up with a straight line horizontal line and this is the one okay next one here again we have when we move to the right in the uh, columns we have a 45 degree rotate sorry 90 degree rotation so 90 degrees we will get this figure 90 degrees we will get this figure so if you rotate this figure 90 degrees you will get something like this right take this figure and you rotate it this way 90 degrees take this one you rotate it this way 90 degrees you will get this one this one rotate it 90 degrees you will get this one this one rotated 90 degrees you will get a figure that looks like this right the only one that fulfills that is this one so this is the correct answer next one in this case we can move either in the columns or the rows if we move in the columns to the right all we do is remove two of the bars so we remove this bar and remove this bar we get three bars we remove this bar we remove this bar we get one bar so we go from five to three to one one two three we go from six to four to two in this case we go from two three four five six seven from seven to five remove two we go to three so we will need to have three bars and which of these two is of course it's this one because it has to keep the orientation of the remaining bars we don't have any bars in this direction not at least three of them we don't have it so it has to be this one get it and if you want to go in the uh, rows direction then you just add a bar five six seven three four five one two three and it has to be in this direction three next one this one is very easy as well and um, first thing you do is you rotate 90 degrees if you rotate this one 90 degrees you will get this figure right but this figure doesn't look like this figure so what what's the other thing we have to do well the other thing we have to do is that we have to mirror this figure that we get so first rotate 90 degrees clockwise and then mirror it and if we mirror this one yeah, well we'll just change the direction of these parts so we will get this this and this and then we do the same thing again so again 90 degrees what happens when we rotate 90 degrees we will get this this and this 
and then we mirror it so this one will be raised it will be there and this one will be raised it will be up there so we will get this this and this and it's this figure we don't even have to do the second row because it, it will be the same let's do the third row at once so let's start off with this figure rotate it 90 degrees we will get this 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 mirror it if we mirror it we will get this and this and if we rotate this figure 90 degrees we will get uh, this this and this right and then we mirror it and we have to erase this one and this one to mirror it and we will get this this and this all right so the correct answer is this one so this is a bit harder because after the rotation step of 90 degrees clockwise you have to do a mirroring so it's two steps okay next one you know it, it's all about practice uh, these things aren't difficult it's just a matter of how many of these puzzles you have solved how many you've seen how many patterns you've seen so it's it's there's no mystery to it it's just about the number how many have you done that's it all right, so this is uh, like uh, yeah, a combination of rotating this part. This is one of the parts. Rotating this part 90 degrees clockwise. There's a lot of 90 degrees clockwise rotation in, in this puzzle. And this square, it just, you know, follows along, but it changes color. So it goes from white to black to, uh, to gray, black, gray, white. Uh, uh, gray, white, well, it has to be black, right? Because after white comes black. And then this one, this part, is rotating 90 degrees clockwise. So we will get something like this when it rotates 90 degrees clockwise. And the square within this, let's call it a bracket, will be black. Because after white, remember, after white comes black. So, the only figure that corresponds to this one is this one. Next puzzle. Easy again. So, it's the same thing, the same principle we had before. First, we have a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise. After 90 degrees clockwise, we have a mirroring. So, rotate this, the whole of this figure 90 degrees, we will get, if we rotate this figure 90 degrees, we will get this figure. And then we do the mirroring. When you do the mirroring, you just erase this one, you will get this one. Right? You'll end up with this figure. And then, then, then you do the same thing, so you just rotate it 90 degrees, you will get this one this one then you do the mirroring so we erase the arrows and change the direction of the arrows okay we don't have to do the second row it's the same thing let's just move from this one to this one okay so first 90 degrees rotation then we will get this and this if we rotate this one 90 degrees clockwise clockwise then we change the direction of the arrows bam bam so this figure is the correct one which is this one next puzzle again again it's I think it's the fourth in a row 90 degree rotation and then just uh, mirroring or you can say in this case changing colors changing colors so 90 degrees rotation and you will get something that looks like this 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 part will be black and this part will be white and then you just change the color you just change the color of these two and you'll end up with this one then you rotate this one 90 degrees and you change the colors change the colors and then you will get this one 
So we can skip the second row, it's the same thing. Let's start with this one. So if you follow the same algorithm, we rotate this figure 90 degrees, we will get something like this. And then we change the colors or we mirror it, uh, mirror it uh, uh, horizontally. Then we will get this one will be black right and this one will be white yep all right enough for drawing and the only one that corresponds to that one is this one so again rotation 90 degrees and then you just change the colors or mirror it so this one is the correct one next one this is an addition puzzle with a twist to it so if you see here if you add the black square to the white square you will end up with a black one black square and uh, the same thing is uh, correct for the inverse statement if you have a white square or a white frame and you add a black frame to it you will get the black frame so black plus white equals black and uh, what happens if we have black plus black? Well, then it becomes white. Because if you have this black square, completely black square, and you add it to this figure, then this area that's black, and if you add more black to it, it will become white. So, next part of the algorithm is black plus black becomes white. What happens if you add white? To white white square to white square well you get a white square completely no sorry <laughs> yeah of course you get the white square but uh, we have to find the figure okay so black plus white becomes black so we will have a black frame black frame just like this And white plus white becomes white. I mean, we can assume that, but the puzzle should have been designed in such a way that we can conclude that. Because in nowhere else in the rows can we find where white plus white becomes white. So we, we cannot conclude it fully, but let's assume it. And the only one that corresponds to that is this one this one black white black frame white white the center remains white next one okay so when you look at this puzzle you have to see what is moving where so this square goes there and then it jumps there and the black square goes there and then it jumps uh, then it jumps over there why does it do that hmm well no it's not true that it goes one one place at a time it actually goes two places at a time bam bam and it will end up there or you can view it as if, if this black square only goes diagonally so this one goes down there and then in, from this figure it goes up there you'll get this figure so it only moves diagonally so it will move back up here no it moved down here so we will have a black square down here in part of the figure and what happens with the white circle well the white circle it moves from here to there and then it moves from here well only one place at the time not two like the black square and when it gets to this part, well, it gets hidden by the black square. Same thing here. It moves here, it gets hidden by the black square. Then it moves here, it gets revealed again. So now it's hidden. There's a circle behind this black square. Then it goes there, ends up there. Then it goes one step again. And it will end up there. All right. So the trick here is to figure out how many 
steps the black square moves, how many steps the white circle moves, and which figure is concealed by which figure. So in this case, the white circle is concealed by the black square. So we'll end up with this figure. And the only one that corresponds to this figure, well, it's this one. So this one is the correct one. Next one. This is a pretty simple uh, addition puzzle. So if we move this way, and if we add this figure to this figure, so if we add a square plus this bracket, we'll end up with just one line to the right. So what happens here is that when these two lines combine, when you have overlapping lines, they take each other out. So this part will be erased, this part will be erased as well, and this part will be erased as well. So what you'll end up with is just this line to the right, which is this one. And the same thing applies for the second row. So let's move on to the third row. Well, we have this one. Well, you don't have to draw the figures if you can figure it out in your head, but since this is an instruction video, I will draw it. So what do we get? Well, these obviously will cancel out. Uh, and nothing else cancels out, right? So we'll have this side, we'll have this one. We will have this one. And we will have this one. So this is the figure we'll end up with. The only one that corresponds to that figure, well, it's this one. Alright, next puzzle. If you look at this for a while, well, it's the same principle, right? Uh, you can't tell it from the first row because you don't have any lines that overlap. So you will just get an addition and then end up with this figure. Well, when you add these two up. How about this one? Well, like in the previous example, you will get some cancelling out. So let's draw this one and see what happens when you add this one and what will cancel out and what will remain. Well, let's draw this one plus the square. Well, this one will cancel out, this part of the figure. This one will cancel out, which is this part of the figure. This one will cancel out, which is this part of the figure. And this one will cancel out, which is this part of the figure. And then this one will remain, this one will remain, this one will remain, and this one will remain. So we will get a figure like this. And the only one that corresponds to that figure, well, it's this one. So that's what we'll end up with. Next puzzle. Well, if you remember the ones with the black square and the white circle, we have to figure out in which direction all of these squares are going. So uh, you can see that this square is just the same. In every figure, it's just the same. It Well, it changes in this uh, this figure it's only because it is concealed by the black square so it the black square is moving and uh, black square is moving from here to here so it's moving clockwise one step clockwise then it ends up here moving one step clockwise it will end up here so the black square will always conceal the other squares that uh, are on uh, under it so in this case, it will move clockwise one step there, and then it will move clockwise one step there and conceal the squares that it moves on top of. And the other squares, if you look at this, they will just be in the same spot. So when this black square moves here, well then the gray square will be reve revealed again. So, and the same thing here, when uh, this uh, black square moves here, then the white square will be re revealed again. Same thing here, when this black square moves here, well then this one will be concealed, become black, we will get this one, and then when it moves here, when, well then it will be visible again, and then we will get the black square, 
concealing the white square. The gray square will be the same, and the white square will be, well, I, I can't really paint gray, but th th this one will be gray. And then we will have a white square there. The only figure that corresponds to this constellation is this one. So this is the correct answer. All right, so how about this puzzle then? Well, we have to see in which direction the bars are moving. So in this case, this the smallest bar is moving one step to the left, and then it's moving one step to the left again, ends up here. One step to the left, and then one step to the left. Well, there's no more left, so it has to come up front here. So it ends up here. So one step to the left, well, it has to start over again, so it ends up there. And then one step to the left again, so we will have it in the middle. The smallest bar will be in the middle. So it has to be either this figure or this figure. Which one is it? Well, let's see where the other bars move. How about the big bar, the biggest bar? Where does, where does it move? Well, it moves to the left because it will end up here again and then it moves to the left again. So everything moves one step to the left. One step to the left for the biggest bar ends up here and one step left again, it will end up here. So biggest bar, one step to the left ends up here. One step to the left, it will end up here. And we only have one pr place remaining for the middle bar, it will end up here. And the only figure that corresponds to this one, well, it's this one. So this is the correct answer. Next one. Well, if we look at this puzzle again, it's actually just a addition and cancellation puzzle. Just like the one we had uh, before, but this time it's um, in some other fancy directions. Well, anyways, lines that... Uh, end up together or in the same direction on top of each other will cancel out so this one is going away as well as this one and then uh, where they don't cancel out they will be added so it's this one will be there and then this one will be there so yeah we will get this figure this one is easy it will just be added there because we have no lines that are on top of each other so no lines to cancel out how about this one well this one will disappear that's for sure this one will disappear because they're on top of each other and then we'll have to add this one because it doesn't overlap with anything else and then just this one so we'll get something like uh, like this the only figure that looks like that is this one next puzzle yeah well this is a tricky one actually because uh, you have to you have to do something here. You, you, you plus these two figures together and then you get this one. But it's not a cancelling out puzzle, it's something else. Well, let's imagine that you have you start off with this square. And then this figure tells you that we need to do something with this square. This is, this is an instruction. In this case, well, do we have to, uh, like punch the square downwards in both directions? No, I don't think we have to do that because uh, the square is not being punched in, it's being punched out. So it's it's uh, convex outwards. So we need to add a convexity. So we need to take this instruction and inverse it. Do the opposite thing. So instead of going down, we, we, we make a convexity upwards. So we have to draw something like this. And the same thing down here, something like this. But it still doesn't look like this one. Yeah, well, we can remove these ones, of course. And then we will end up with something like this. But it still doesn't look like this one. The other thing that we have to do is that you can see we, we have to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Then we'll end up with this figure. Will this algorithm hold for the second row? Well, let's find out. We have the square, sorry, let's start here. We have the square, and then we have the algorithm. The algorithm tells us, the instruction tells us to, that this side has to be punched out. Well, 
uh, not uh, if uh, we follow the previous example. This side has to be punched in instead. We have to do the inverse, so it has to be punched in. And then this side, it doesn't have to be punched in, it has to be punched out, because we have to do the opposite of what this figure is telling us. So we'll end up with something like this, bam, bam, and then bam, bam. And what else do we have to do? Well, we have to rotate the whole thing 90 degrees, clockwise. And what, we, what will we end up with? Well, we'll end up with something like this, bam, 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 which looks very much like this figure. So our algorithm is correct. Now we just need to apply it for the last row. Do the opposite of what this figure is telling us. So that's the instruction. So we'll start off with this square. And then this figure tells us, well, punch this side inwards. Well, we don't have to do that. We have to do the opposite thing. So we punch this square. We punch this side outwards. We make it convex outwards. Then we make this part convex inwards because it tells us that we have to do that. And then this part has to be convex outwards. Yeah. And then we remove these sides. So what we will end up with is this, 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 and this. And then we rotate the whole thing 90 degrees clockwise. And we'll end up with something like this, 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 and that. And the only figure that resembles this one, well, is this one. Yeah, so this one was a bit tricky. You have to find the algorithm. You start off with a square, then this row tells you what you have to do with the square. You have to figure out what to do with the square. In this case, it indicates that you have to punch in or pu punch out some sides. Well, you have to do the opposite of what it's indicating. So when it points inwards, well, you have to punch these side outwards. And then what we needed to do, the next step, was to rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. All right. Next puzzle. Uh, this puzzle is uh, quite easy. I mean, you just add this one on top of this one, and the circle will conceal the square because the square is behind the circle, and you'll end up, you'll end up with a black circle. So this row will always conceal this row when it's added to it, as in this case. White square on top of uh, black triangle looks like this. So we'll have a gray uh, square on top of a black triangle. So it's either this one or this one. And I don't think it's a good idea to add like a size estimation in a in an IQ puzzle. It's a very very bad uh, bad puzzle to be honest because you have to have really a good uh, measuring ability with your eyes to see which one it is but if we look at it carefully it cannot be this one because this this square is actually just uh, indicating this square I mean the size of the figure itself and all of a sudden we can't just increase the size of the uh, triangle there because you see that the triangle is much much bigger so it has to be this one I mean, it's not the optimal IQ puzzle uh, because you have to estimate the sizes as well. So I don't think it's a good one, but uh, you have the right solution there anyway. So next one. This one is quite easy. Uh, let's follow the rows. So what happens is that uh, this figure is bou bounce, uh, bouncing up and down. So it's just mirroring up and down, up and down. You have like up and down 180 degrees up and down up and down so of course this one will be in this direction but then we have to figure out how many uh, squares small squares there will be and where there they will be so here we have three squares here we have four squares because this part is also filled in with a square and here we have five squares so you have two small black squares here three here and four here so one, two, we will have three small squares. And where will the squares be placed? 
Well, here there they are down here. On this, it looks like an immunoglobulin, and then you have it on the uh, right side in the next picture, and it has to be on the left side. It has to be on the left side because here you have the squares on the right side. In this figure, you have them on the left side, and then you have them on the base of the immunoglobulin. So left base right base right it has to be left and we have to have three small black squares here on the left side the only figure that fulfills that well it's this one we have the correct direction of the immunoglobulin and we have three black squares on the left side next one well this one is a bit tricky uh, if we move in this direction you can see that we have this figure which looks like a U but with a straight line like this and then you have this L and then you have this uh, 90 degrees rotated V so obviously it has to be yeah one, one of these U figures but which direction will it have well in this row if we go down there in this row this figure rotates 90 degrees as you can see it rotates 90 degrees to get this figure and is it really that simple that you just have to rotate it 90 degrees again because then you will get this figure and the only figure that corresponds to this figure is, is this one but it's even easier if you look at it uh, diagonally because I every time you move down a row all of the different figures rotate 90 degrees clockwise uh, it's even uh, more elegant if you look at it diagonally like this so if we don't follow neither the columns nor the rows if we just follow it diagonally like this and uh, if, we, if you look at these diagonals you always have the same type of figure the only difference is that it's rotated 90 degrees clockwise. So here you rotate 90 degrees clockwise, you go diagonally, you get this one. You rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, you go diagonally, you'll end up here, and you'll, you'll end up with this figure, which is only option, correct option is this one. Next puzzle. Okay, so how about this one? Well, uh, this, let, let's move in the columns direction addition equals this addition equals this uh, addition equals this what kind of a how do you combine these two figures to get this one well what you really do is that if well let, let's write them all together if we add up these two figures well we'll get this one uh, black and then we'll have three white squares and we'll have this one we don't have anything on this side and what happens if we add a square on this side well it just stays there yeah we get two we get two black squares and what happens if we add two white squares on this side well then we have to yeah then, then the squares cancel out they have to cancel out for us to get this figure so it's really uh, if they are on the same side of the line for instance this one and this one then you add them up together if they are on opposite sides of the line then you have to subtract them so it's really easy so this one is on the same side of the line as this one but it's on the opposite side of the line as that one so you have to subtract the white ones and uh, yeah, you have to remove the white ones and since the black is not on the same side as the other black you have to remove the black ones as well yeah so it's a uh, addition or subtraction of black uh, uh, and white squares separately so you yeah, end up with this one so what happens here well yeah you just add two black squares on this side and this figure doesn't contribute either with addition neither with addition nor with subtraction because it doesn't have any squares in it so we, we will just end up with uh, yeah two black squares on the left side 
just an addition and subtraction puzzle and you have to figure out how to add or subtract and uh, to add and subtract the white and black square separately it's quite easy uh, this one is the correct figure next one yeah this one is also an addition and cancellation puzzle so you just add this one and you get this one how do we end up with this one you know it, it takes a while to realize uh, that it's an addition and cancellation puzzle because first you think okay is this square moving somewhere and this square moving somewhere to get this figure and then these black squares move somewhere to get no it's much easier than that it's just an addition of all of these squares on top of these squares and if you have black on top of black then you get white if you have white on top of black then you get black and if two white squares are added together you will get white so uh, let's do the same algorithm for this row and uh, then we will get that these will cancel uh, these will be white which is correct uh, white plus white will be white black plus black will be white that's correct as well uh, uh, white white black black this will be black white 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 so white and white is still white black white is black okay so in this case uh, all the uh, white squares are remaining white if the uh, same position is white so it's this square plus this square two black squares will become white and one black square plus one white square will become black so the only thing we'll end up with is just a black square in the bottom right corner just like that which is this one quite easy next one uh, yeah same thing here as soon as you see these kind of puzzles you may think oh this is so complicated it's not that complicated and you can draw in your head and uh, you know eliminate some sides because most of these puzzles uh, well perhaps it's just for the finish mensa puzzle is actually an addition and cancellation puzzle so sides that uh, uh, overlap or, or lines that over overlap will cancel each other out so this line will overlap with this line and so they will cancel each other out out uh, and the other line that will cancel out is this one as well as this one so what you'll get is that uh, you will get something like this and this line will also cancel out yeah so you you will get something like uh, this will this one will remain this one will be there this one will be there and this one will be there and this one will yeah you will get this puzzle so let's do the same thing with uh, these ones well first of all these will cancel out because they overlap this line will cancel out because it's the same as this line they overlap what else do we get well no other lines are overlapping so no other lines will be cancelled out and then you can just draw it this line will still be there this line will be there this line will be there this line will be there and this line will be there and it corresponds to this figure easy addition cancellation how about this one um, yeah when you look at it it has to be a white square here but that's only figuring out uh, nothing basically because uh, what this one is telling us is that we have to work with uh, uh, this part of the figure something is happening with this part of the figure the, the squares are completely irrelevant because they are the same in the columns and the square all of the squares are the same in all of the answers so we have to do something with this one and this one to get these two lines but if it's a an addition and cancellation puzzle we, we can't really add this L plus this one to get this one if you just remove the squares because the squares are irrelevant so how do we uh, add these together to make the overlapping lines cancel out to get this one well if you think about it I mean and, and the, the the second row is this one plus this one equals this one 
So what we have to do really, and you will figure this out after a minute or two of thinking about it or quicker, you just have to rotate this figure 45 degrees counterclockwise. And then you'll end up with this figure. And then you add these two figures together. And in parts where they overlap, they will cancel each other out. And then you'll end up with this and this. Let's apply this algorithm for this row as well to see if it actually is correct. So rotate this figure 45, not 90 degrees and not clockwise, but 45 degrees counterclockwise. So you will get this one plus this one because you rotated it counterclockwise 45 degrees. These two lines overlap so they will cancel out. And then you get this one which is actually correct. So you now you just need to apply because we've confirmed that our theoretical algorithm is true. So now you apply it to the third row. Third row is this one plus this one equals what? Well, rotate the second figure 45 degrees counterclockwise and you'll end up with this figure. Remember, this one is on the uh, right side. And then you will get this figure because none of the lines overlap. So what you'll end up with is this one and then you'll have a square inside of it. The only one that fulfills that is this one. Next figure. Well, this is a bit of a tricky one because you see that um, in which direction should we move? Well, if we move in this direction, how do we get from this figure to a circle? It's completely illogical. We have to move in some other direction. If we move in this direction in the rows, we go from uh, like lines to curved uh, to half circles and half circles. That, that, that's not the right direction either. We have to find some figure that corresponds to this figure that we can work with. Well, this figure corresponds, it is uh, like made up of the same components as this figure, just like another uh, rearrangement of it. And this figure is, it has the same components as this figure and this figure. And this figure has the same components as this figure and this figure. So as you can see, uh, these three belong together. It has a lot of lines now. Uh, these three belong together and this one, this one and, and uh, yeah the square that we're after belong together as well. So you can rewrite it like how do we go from a circle to this figure and then to this figure uh, and how do we go from a uh, from this figure to a triangle and then this figure. Oh, sorry. Um, and then this figure. Well, first we need to cut this figure in half. Cut this figure in half. And then we have to mirror or rotate outwards, or mirror is the correct expression, mirror the sides or mirror the figure horizontally to end up with this figure. So, so far so good. How do we go from this step to this step? Well, um, it's not that easy because to go from this step to this step you have to take this part of the figure and rotate it 180 degrees to get this figure. But if we do the same thing here and rotate this this part of the figure 180 degrees we will end up with something like uh, like this which is not the same as this figure so it's not correct either how should we think about this and solve it what else do, do does this pattern and this have in common well the other thing that they have in common is that uh, the left part of each of these three figures uh, is the same in two of the rows. So for instance this part is the same as this part. 
and this part is the same as this part. I know it's a bit far-fetched, but it's actually the correct answer. So, the left part of the figure has to be the same in two of the rows. Two of the rows. And this is correct for the circle uh, pattern and for the triangle pattern as well. And the other thing they have in common is the horizontal mirroring and the uh, vertical mirroring, or you can call it 180 degree rotation, but it's a vertical mirroring. So, what uh, if we start with the uh, uh, squares then? We take this one, we cut it in half, and we mirror it, we will end up with this figure, which is this one. So, so far, so good. Same pattern as the other figures. And now what we have to do is to have the left side, left part of the figure, in common uh, in two of the rows. So this is the left part of the figure, and this is so it's not in common, it's not the same as this left part of the figure. So it has to be our figure has to look like this on the left side for for, for this algorithm to be true, that two of the uh, rows do have to have the left part of the figure the same. So this one is the same. And then what we did was that we took this one and then we mirrored it or rotated it 180 degrees if you like um, counterclockwise to get this this figure. So we will end up with something like this. And the only figure that corresponds to this pattern is this figure. Yeah, this one is a bit far-fetched, but this one is the correct answer. And the only way I figured it out was that I, uh, of course, mirrored it horizontally, but also had to add to the algorithm that the left side um, of the figure has to be the same in two of the rows. Yeah. Okay, next puzzle. This is a, if we look at the first row, it looks pretty straightforward. It's just an addition puzzle. So if you don't have anything here and you add two small squares, you'll end up with two small squares. How about this one then? If you add a small square to a small square, you'll end up with a big square. If you add a small square to a big square, you'll still end up with a big square. And then on the right side, of, of course, if it's, it follows the same pattern as the first row. So if you don't have anything and you add two squares, you'll end up with two squares. So if this algorithm, algorithm is to be true, one small square added to a black square, oh, that's really not straight line, anyways, then you will end up with a big black square, small black square added to a big black square will still be a big black square, then on the right side, well, you don't have anything on the right side here, and you have two small squares here. So you'll end up with two small squares. So this is the correct answer. You can see none of the alternatives correspond to our clever answer. And I think that this is a mistake. The only one that corresponds pretty well to it is this one. So we have to choose this one, even though it's not correct, because, I mean, these have to change place. But uh, this one is the closest enough to our, uh, our conclusion. Okay, next puzzle. This puzzle is pretty tricky, to be honest. Because uh, if you try to go in the road direction, you won't be that lucky at all. Because it's not the direction in which you should go to solve the puzzle. You must go in the, sorry, in the columns direction. You must go in the rows direction. And how do you have to go in the rows direction? Well, first, you have to take this figure. It took me a while to figure out. And then you have to mirror this figure, add it to this figure, and in all the areas where the lines overlap, they cancel each other out, and you'll end up with this figure. And I promise you that's true. So if we take this figure, and if we mirror it, we will end up with this figure, and then if we take that figure and add it to this figure, 
Well, first of all, uh, these parts of the figure will overlap. So this one is going away, this one is going away. And then this part of the figure is going away, as well as this part of the figure is going away. And then this part of the figure is going away as well. And this part is going away. And then this part is going away. This part will remain. This part will remain. So you'll end up with something like, yeah, and th this part will will uh, still be there. It's a bit hard to draw in the right dimensions, but it is correct, believe me. Uh, and it's easier if we uh, actually do it with this column. So you take the first row, you mirror it. What happens if you mirror this one? Well, then you'll end up with this one, this one, and this one. And what else will you do? Well, then you add, you add this one to it. Take this one, this one, this one. So what will happen is that these will cancel out because they overlap. And what you'll end up with is this one is remaining, this one is, so this one is remaining, this one is remaining, and uh, this one is remaining as well. And this one is remaining. So it corresponds to this figure. It's completely right. So let's do the same thing with this figure. So we have to mirror this figure. Then we'll end up with something like this. Is this and this, right? And then you add this figure to it. So you'll have something like you add the you add this figure to it. You have something like this. Then you have this. So what we will end up with is that, well, if we add them together, then these two will cancel out, obviously. Uh, this one will also cancel out, this line will also, but only partially in the areas where you have the dashed lines. When you don't have the dashed lines, they won't cancel out, so they will still remain. And then Actually, these er this area and this area do not overlap. So what you'll end up with is this dashed line. And if you add this area to this area, you will get a triangle like that. So this is the correct figure we're after. And the only figure that corresponds to this figure was this one. Yeah. So great stuff. This one was a bit tricky, but, you know... I mean, the most tricky thing is just to figure out, first of all, that you have to go in the rose direction, and then that you have to mirror the first image, and then it's just a um, addition and cancellation puzzle, just like the tons of puzzles we had before this one with addition and cancellation. Yeah, all right, guys, that was the end of the show. Um, I really hope that this was uh, of some interest and uh, of some um, value for you for either if you want to take the Mensa test or for a job interview and something else. And remember, it's just a matter of practice. I mean, it's you have to have some talent, but if you don't have the talent, you can still practice and become as good as people who have natural talent to solve these puzzles. Just a matter of practice, a matter of how many puzzles you've solved, how many puzzles you've seen, how many patterns you've seen. So um, don't... Uh, don't hesitate to train on these puzzles and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.